I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present uh, pain data here. Uh, my disclosure is, um, as was said, I'm a full-term employee of um, uh, Janssen uh, R&D. So I want to give you an uh, update on the paint study. This is the week 48 safety and efficacy analysis. Um, the NNRTI Rilpivirin has been approved in many countries already in adults for the treatment um, of uh, treatment naive uh, adults with a viral load of less than 100,000 copies in most uh, countries. The reason here for is, is that uh, in the phase three studies in adults, we saw that patients with a higher viral load had more virologic failure. There is also a single tablet uh, regimen or fixed dose combination available um, of Rilpivirin together with uh, to, uh, Truvada, so tenofovir and emtricitabine. This study, PAINT, um, is in treatment-naive adolescents with, uh, who started with a Rilpivirin-based regimen and were treated for 48 weeks up to this uh, analysis point. From the week 24 data, we know that the exposure was similar to adults. The efficacy overall was 75% uh, in a subgroup analysis of the patients who had a, a viral load at start of treatment. Of less than 100,000 copies, the, res the virologic response was 86%. Resistance and safety at that time point of 24 weeks was similar to uh, adults. Here is the design of the study. It started with the part 1A, where we did intensive PK in about in 11 subjects uh, at weeks two. Um, we had to repeat that um, intensive PK based on the DSMB analysis, um, where the data were not sufficient to show uh, comparability with adults. So we uh, enrolled an additional 14 adolescents in part 1B and did their intensive PK at week four to make sure that they had reached steady state. And at that point, we decided that the exposures with the 25 milligram was similar to adults, and we proceeded to enroll the rest of the adolescents in the study. So Repivin was used in the study with an investigator choice of backbone, but most uh, patients uh, used Truvada, and the other um, options are listed here. And you see the other uh, in main eligibility criteria, the most important change in the uh, uh, inclusion criteria that is uh, from part 1B onwards, we restricted the enrollment to patients with a viral load uh, below 100,000 copies. Here's the demographics. Uh, a little bit over half of the adolescents were girls. Uh, we aim to have equal numbers in the age group of 12 to 15 years and 15 to 18 years, which was achieved. Um, most of the children were from Africa, some were from Asia, and you can see the list of uh, countries that enrolled patients in the study here. For baseline characteristics, since, as I said, we restricted the enrollment from Part 1B onwards to patients who had a baseline viral load below 100,000 copies, uh, obviously, the majority, 78%, um, uh, had this criterion. The CD4 cell uh, count ranged from 25 to about 1,000, and the mode of uh, HIV infection was mostly mother-to-child transmission. 20, about 20% of the children had uh, CDC category C, and you can see the clade uh, distribution here. This is a summary of the safety, the adverse events, uh, and you can see that seven uh, adolescents had a grade three or four adverse events uh, up to, f well, the duration of the observation was a total of 72 weeks because our recruitment in this study was rather low. So over that period, seven had uh, grade three, four AE. Two of those were malaria, two depression, and none of them was related to the study drug. 
Out of the six uh, serious adverse events, there was one who was uh, possibly related to rilpivirine, and this was a, an adolescent with hypersensitivity and a grade 2 rash for which hospitalization was required. And um, he continued to be treated with rilpivirine and uh, up to resolution of the rash. So he was not discontinued from the study. There was one discontinuation because of an adverse event, and that was a patient who developed tuberculosis. And as you may know, we um, have a problem of a drug-drug interaction between uh, rilpivirine and uh, antituberculous drugs. And that was the reason. It was a mandatory withdrawal from the study. For the most common possibly related AEs, those were somnolence and nausea. For lab abnormalities, grade 3 and 4, those were very infrequent and there was no really consistent or clinically relevant changes in, these, uh, in any lab parameters over time. We also monitored ECG and QTCF interval, but there were no uh, relevant changes over time. And here you see the response at week 48 with an overall response of 72%, but in the adolescents with a baseline viral load below 100,000, it was 79%. Obviously, in the ones with a higher viral load, it was much lower. And here is some detail on the uh, virologic response. Um, when you look at the subjects with a viral load at baseline below 100,000, three of them were nev never suppressed at week 24, but one of those became suppressed at week uh, 48. But there were an additional three uh, reboundaries uh, after week 24. So the total virologic failure rate in that subgroup was 5 uh, or 18 percent. Looking at the ones with the viral load at baseline above 100,000, also three were not suppressed at week 24. One of those got suppressed by week 48, but we also had one early rebounder already at uh, week 24. So the total here was three, but out of the eight is 38 percent, so a high virologic failure rate. The summary of the resistance findings, out of the eight uh, patients with virologic failure in this analysis, five had treatment emergent uh, rilpivirine resistance associated mutations, mostly the E138K. And also four of the five uh, of these virologic failures had, uh, had um, NRTI REMS, which was mostly the one, M184V. So the resistance pattern is uh, overall consistent with what was observed in adults. Adherence by pill count uh, in these adolescents uh, appeared to be high. Uh, only eight subjects had, uh, re had pill count uh, levels below 95%. And by self-reported questionnaire, that was also a high, um, where only uh, three out of the 34 missing at most one dose um, in recall. But we know from the uh, early data from the uh, intensive PK part that we did that adherence must have been lower than they, was, they reported because when we re repeated that uh, uh, intensive PK part with more intense support for adherence, we saw that uh, it had an influence on the, on the exposure. Looking at the population pharmacokinetic uh, data over the 48 weeks, uh, we see that the exposure both for AUC as c -truff is very comparable to what was observed in the adult uh, phase 3 studies. So in conclusion, rilpivirine 25 milligram once a day is uh, safe, efficacious, and the resistance uh, pattern and pharmacokinetic profiles in these adolescents was very similar to what was seen in adults. The virologic response was 79% in patients with a baseline viral load below 100,000, and we saw a high um, uh, appearance of uh, resistance associated mutations in virologic failures, mostly the E138K associated with rilpivirine. And again, the PK is similar to um, that uh, was demonstrated in adults. 
and there was no impact of age, gender, or body weight on the rilpivirine uh, pharmacokinetics. So these findings support the use of rilpivirine uh, 25 milligrams once daily in subjects who have, or in adolescents who have uh, a viral load that is a a below 100,000 copies per ml. I want to thank the patients who participated in the studies, uh, in the study, the investigators, as well as the uh, personnel who supported this presentation. Thank you very much.